Hello, everyone. We're going to get started. There's probably some people who will come in a little bit later, and that's fine. I'm Dori Stoley. I'm uh, here in today in Maryland, actually, but I hail from Plymouth, Massachusetts, and I'm going to talk to you about wild bird identification. As I'm talking, if you would type in where uh, you're watching from, that'd be great. I'd love to know where you all are. And I, uh, before I get started, I also wanted to say a big thank you to the Elgin School High School students who are putting this on. Once again, they've done a fantastic job. This is really exciting. And I, I thank them very much for all of their hard work. So, oh, we've got Pennsylvania. We've got Illinois. Excellent. Now, as we go along, please, uh, if you have questions, please type them. Some of them I may address immediately and others I might hold to the end. It depends if they're um, on topic about the slide I'm talking about at the moment or something different. If, however, your class needs to leave early, um, type your question in all caps and I'll try to get to your question sooner rather than later. Okay, so we're going to get started now. Um, first of all, uh, introduce myself, Dori Stoley. I am an ornithologist, which is a scientist who studies birds. I was in the field or doing most of my work outside for a long time when I worked as a wildlife biologist. Now I do a variety of things well, because I run my own business called Three Birds Consulting, and I do a lot of communication and outreach uh, all over the country and get to look at birds and projects that can serve birds uh, throughout the nation. That's who I used to work for, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which is a federal agency. And one of the things I did when I was a wildlife biologist was go out in the field and study birds, which is so fascinating. For instance, you can see me in this picture crouching down I'm the person who's below. Uh, above is an intern who was working with me. If you look carefully at this picture, you can see cacti, prickly pear cacti, not the usual spot you'd think of finding birds, right? Or birds' eggs like this. Well, we would find all these eggs among the cactus. So what was going on here? That's what we wanted to find out. It turned out, strangely enough, that a duck nests in the cacti. This is the black-bellied whistling duck. So I studied where it nested and how well it did with this strange nesting on islands covered with cactus. And the highlight of my time of work with US Fish and Wildlife Service was when I got to be their mascot, the blue goose. So that is me in the blue costume. So you may be wondering why birds, or maybe not since you're all watching this and interested in birds already. But to me, one of the reasons birds are so interesting is because they can be, they range from the tiniest little hummingbird, you see it there with a penny to show how small it is, to an ostrich, which can stand six feet tall. Also, they can be very colorful, like this purple gallinule, and cute as well. I like this chick. This is a piping plover chick, which is an endangered species. And uh, scientists and people, actually, uh, citizens, are working to conserve this bird. And they're doing a good job, actually. I like to say that. Uh, also, bird behavior is fascinating. This is a bird that's found pretty much all over the world, except not in one continent. Can you guess which continent it's not found on? You're right, Antarctica. Um, it's not very um, conducive. It's not a really comfortable place for birds that eat fish like these osprey or fish hawks. We have them in Plymouth, Massachusetts, where I'm from, and we watch them all summer long as they nest because they nest in the north and then they go south for the winter time. So if you're watching from the Southern Hemisphere or even Central America, you might see them in the winter time. So we watch their behavior, which is fascinating. And you can see bird behavior. It doesn't have to be as a raptor like this, a big hawk. You can see bird behavior anywhere. You can see it in the parking lot of McDonald's. So that's another reason I personally like birds and I'm doing this presentation. 
Oh, I see that there's someone watching from Fall River, Massachusetts. That's great. Well, we definitely know about these osprey then. And they will be returning soon. At the end of March, they come back from South America to Massachusetts earlier in other places. It depends where you are, of course, and how warm it is. And um, uh, so keep your eye out for the osprey or fish hawk. And now here's the other thing is that there are so many different kinds of birds. They're so beautiful, many of them, and they can be found right in your backyard, in your schoolyard, in an empty lot nearby, overhead when you're driving on the interstate. I've seen bald eagles when I'm driving on the, on the road because, of course, they can fly over many, many miles. So that's why birds. Now, what I'm going to tell you are six not so secret secret tips that I know of for identifying birds and this will help you. Perhaps some of you did uh, uh, some of the work beforehand and looked at field guides. A field guide is a book that has pictures or photographs of birds in it and helps you identify different ones and it's a great way to to uh, figure out the name of the bird that you're looking at. Not necessary at all to enjoy watching birds but I will talk about some things you can do with your field guide to help you better identify birds. So you see these six secret tips, location, habitat, behavior, sounds, silhouette, colors and marking. And please note that colors and marking are the last one. People love to look at the tiny little details on birds and certainly they're fun, but in terms of identifying them, my not so secret secret tip is Look at the other five things first, then move on to colors and marking. So we're going to talk about location first. And there's my dad. I'm going to tell my dad's story to tell you about location. So this is dad. It was a few years ago. I gave dad a bird feeder and a bird book and got him interested in bird watching. And one day he called me up. He was so excited. He said, Dory, Dory, I see from my backyard through the window in the backyard a Jamaican woodpecker. And there's a Jamaican woodpecker right there. And I said, Dad, that's, that's incredible, but, but it's Jamaican and, and you're not in Jamaica. What field guide are you using? He said, oh, that one you gave me of birds of North America, I, I gave it to Stephen. That's my nephew, his grandson. I said, okay, you're not using birds of North America. What field guide are you using? He said, oh, I've got a lovely, birds of the world, and it looks exactly like this Jamaican woodpecker. Well, I opened up my field guide, and look at these two birds. Do they look very similar? They look almost exactly alike. One is the Jamaican woodpecker, and the other is our common red-bellied woodpecker. I said, Dad, Dad, oh no. <laughs> It does look like a Jamaican woodpecker, but chances are it's this red-bellied. Look at the range map. The arrow points to Maryland, where my father was. The green shows the range of the red-bellied woodpecker just on target, right? Now, the Jamaican woodpecker, the arrow, the yellow arrow part points to where it's found in Jamaica. And the red arrow is my, where my dad was. So I said, Dad, Dad, it's very exciting, but chances are really, really, really good that it's a red-bellied woodpecker and not a Jamaican woodpecker because you need to know your location and the range of the bird. So where are you at the moment and what's the bird's range? So once you know that, that will really cut down the number of birds that, that you will be looking at in your field guide. And um, I wanted to point out the range map of this, the American robin, which is found all through uh, North America. And I wanted to point out its Latin name because a lot of people go by Latin names. When I was a kid and still very recently, and maybe even now, it's one of my favorite Latin names. It's Turdus migratorius. I kid you not. Science can be very fun. So a tip, mark up your field guide, right? And use a highlighter, perhaps, and highlight the birds that are in your area, or put an X next to birds that aren't going to be found in your home state to help you narrow down the birds that you're likely to see. So we're going to go on to the second one of my six 
not so secret secret tips. Habitat. What is habitat? You guys know what habitat is. I know you all study that in very early grades. You know, where a bird nests and find food and shelter. Um, this can really help you figure out what bird you're looking at. Look at these two birds. They look very similar, don't they? Except one has two bands on its chest and the, only, the other only has one. It also has some bands on its legs, um, rings rather, that people put on. Well, uh, the one with two bands is a killdeer and it's found in parking lots and schoolyards even sometimes. And it's common, pretty, not, not super common, but you can, you can find it uh, all over the country. The, one, the other one with one band, the orange bill, and the orange legs is a piping plover. And it's only found at the beach and only in certain areas um, on the East Coast and actually inland as well on, in sandy beaches. So habitat helps you figure out what birds you might find. Here's a bunch of different habitats. So I want you to look around and see what, look at these pictures. What do you see? What types of habitats? Of course, I put in the beach because that's near me and the desert. Wow, check that out. What are you gonna find in the desert? Perhaps a road runner? And we've also got a marsh. We will find a lot of wading birds like egrets and herons, and you find ducks and so forth. And then the picture with the person in it is could be your backyard. So you can find a lot of birds in your backyard if you put up what? You provide for them some food uh, in uh, a bird feeder, and, and sometimes people put up nesting boxes for them. Some birds will nest in boxes. So you make your habitat in your backyard even more appealing to them. And it doesn't have to be bird feeders either. It could be um, plants, native plants that provide the food that they would eat, like berries and so forth. So you can do it a variety of ways. So you can add notes in your field guide about the habitat you find a bird in. Uh, is it found in your backyard? Whatever, make little notes in your field guide. Number three is behavior as well as flight pattern. How a bird behaves, just like how a person behaves, can clue you in on what kind of bird it is. And that, this includes how it feeds and how it flies. For, so for flying, is it flapping its wings really fast or slow? Does it do a couple flaps and then glide? Uh, gliding, of course, is when it's not flapping and it's just uh, using the energy from its flapping to move forward, or it might also be using thermals, the hot air that rises up from the ground. It can ride those thermals and won't have to, won't have to flap at all. So what's a good tip for this? Aha, learn the flight pattern principle song and sing it often. Now, if this is a good song to learn for you, or for if you babysit, you can teach to the kids you babysit, um, or you can teach it to your grandparents. <laughs> grandparents really like this one. I'm going to sing it twice for you. Uh, you. The second time your class can, well, the first time you can if you want, but we, you can try and have your class sing along. Here are the words. And I'm going to, I hope you can see it. It's a little hard to see here, but I'm going to show the, um, the arms. So it goes, wings in a V for a vulture, wings straight out for a hawk, never in a hurry for a seagull, always in a hurry for a duck. Okay, are you ready to try? All right, put your wings up. We'll do it together. Wings in a V for a vulture, wings straight out for a hawk, Never in a hurry for a seagull. Always in a hurry for a duck. Quack, quack. Great job. Excellent. I wish I could have seen you. Um, so what does that show? I mean, it, it's just, it's a great song because wings in a V for vulture means that vulture or buzzard, as you may know them, holds its wings out, not straight out, but in a slight V. It's also called a dihedral. And when you're looking at soaring birds, that is birds that are in the air but aren't flapping a lot, if you see those wings in a dihedral or, or V, uh, you'll know that it's a vulture rather than, for instance, a bald eagle because they hold their wings straight out and other hawks. So a few hawks, there are some that haven't 
sung the song. And so like um, a red tail hawk will have it in a slight V. Glad you like that song, Mrs. S and class. Um, so never in a hurry for a seagull. So when you watch a seagull flap, it's pretty slow. It's got big wings. It flies pretty easily without a whole lot of energy. A duck has to flap really hard. What does that tell you about a duck? Why? Why does it have to flap very hard? Well, one of the reasons is that most ducks, um, a lot of ducks dive for their food or they tip over to get food. They're heavy. It shows that they're heavy. They're, so in order to fly, they have to get, put out more energy and flap really hard. And um, um, Melanie is class, uh, uh, says we all did the dance. That's great. It's really a fun one. I love this. And if you, if you sing it often and think about the words, you'll think about how watching bird behavior can help you identify what bird it is. So other behaviors, let's talk about feeding behavior. Some birds use sight like this. What bird is this? Of course, our national emblem, the bald eagle. It will fly, use its sharp eyesight to find its food, and then go down and catch it in its sharp, sharp talons. The osprey, or fish hawk, that I showed earlier um, also uses its sight. As does this beautiful bird, a great egret. And it has some tiny little fish in its beak, so you know its eyesight must be pretty good. It will stand motionless until it sees something and then quickly dart its long neck out and speak and grab it. Um, before I go on to touch, I am going to answer this question. Why is it called the bald eagle? Why do you think it's called the bald eagle? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I think it's called a bald eagle because when you look at it from far away without binoculars, as the people who first observed it did, they um, it looked like it was bald. It just had a white head. Uh, but if you know another story, type it in the chat box and I will um, read it to everyone. All right, so we're going to try um, watching a video that I've got on my screen. So I'm going to screen share and it shows, um, it shows sandpipers feeding using touch. All right, we can put that down. Whoops, put that down. There we go. I'm going to show this for a few seconds. So there's sandpipers near where I live in Massachusetts. Look at them running, 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 sticking their bills in. You might think that they're looking at stuff, and they can use their eyesight. But in this case, they stick their bills down into the sand, and they can feel stuff in there, and they pull it out. All right, I'm going to try, oops, try and switch back here to the screen for me. Hmm. Let me close. Sorry about that. I'm having a little. Oh, are y'all still there? I've lost my screen. Oh, no. Let me try one more time. Well, I'm, I'm not going to give up, but. Well, I'm looking for my screen. I hope you can hear me. I'll just try again here. For some reason. Whoopsie. Can someone? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Hmm. Um, I'm working on this. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm trying to get back to you. So I can't see. You know what? I am going to go back to PowerPoint and I'm going to show this on my screen. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I can't seem to find the correct. Um, 
correct can let's see can someone ah, sorry <laughs> i'm going to show this on the screen here all right and if you can see this and hear me would you please uh email me at dory d-o-r-i-e at three birds consulting.net and i'll make sure so i'm just going to keep going hoping that you hear me so here we have uh, I, we can hear you oh good okay thank you <laughs> thank you i i lost my chat screen i'm going to keep going i'll try and find it at the end so you can ask questions okay or elgin you can um actually just turn your sound on and read okay. the questions to me i'm so sorry but we'll keep going okay so here we have look at this bird this is incredible so this is another bird that uses touch check out its bill sorry we can't what's that you can't see we can't we can't hear it so we we can't see the slide i i put us back to the slides which screen do you want us on can okay can you just advance the um slides for me would that work i don't know what i don't know where Sure, you, I don't know why. Right now you're on slide 23. Now I'm on what? Slide 23. Um, okay. Does it have a picture of a um, a black and white bird? Oh, go to 24, please. Okay, so slide 24 is this incredible black and white bird. Um, that is that has look at its bill okay so if you'll advance one then there should be an inset of this slide showing the same bird with its bill in the water using touch to snap up fish so as that long lower bill or mandible goes through the water and if it encounters something it will snap its bill shut and have a fish another bird that uses um touch so let's go to slide 25 and a bird that uses hearing. So what kind of bird uses hearing? An owl, of course, very good uh, hearing because it hunts at night and it can see some too, look at those big eyes, but it mostly uses its hearing. We're gonna go on to slide 26, feeding behavior. What uses smell? You might need to advance to get the inset on this one which shows the silhouette of a bird flying. Now, which bird is this? Wings in a V for a vulture. This is a turkey vulture, and it is actually mostly gliding, and it's using its smell, sense of smell, to find its food. And what do you think a turkey vulture is looking for? Go to slide 28. Oh my goodness. That should be the picture of the vulture eating a dead deer. Yeah, so it smells dead um, flesh and that's what it's gonna eat. Now there's an interesting, really fascinating fact how turkey vultures help people because of this behavior. When natural gas is pumped through pipelines, they actually add a smell to it. It's, it's odorless. They add a smell to it that smells like kind of sulfury or dead deer-ish. And when that, if there's a um, crack in the pipe and, and the gas is coming out, they can actually find it by looking to see where the turkey vultures are circling. I think that's incredible. All right, so we're gonna skip over slide 28 of the Blue Jay um, and go on to slide 29, which is sounds, songs and calls. There should be two pictures. Big uh, pictures of two birds on here. If not, you'll need to press advance. Um, and the, the question is, how do you tell a fish crow from an American crow? Well, so one of these is a fish crow and one's an American crow. Maybe you don't care. And in that case, it doesn't really matter. But if you want to tell them apart, how do you tell? You can only, well, you can actually look at some tiny little details in their bill and in their feathers on their wing if you're holding one in your hand and you can tell the difference. Otherwise, you use sound. And here is where you get to hear my, my very exciting um, bird imitations. 
We'll start with a fish crow. Here is how a fish crow sounds. Ah, 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 ah. Kind of mellow. Here's the American crow. Ah, ah, ah. You can try that in your classroom if it's okay with your teacher. Fish crow. Ah, 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 ah. American crow. Ah, ah. Much more guttural. Where I live, we have both of them. Now you probably don't know if you have both of them, but now you can listen and tell if you have both the fish crow and the American crow. Excellent job. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide. I'm gonna imitate, I'm gonna do another bird. I want you to tell me what it is, okay? Okay. Woo, woo, -hoo. woo, -hoo. You got that one? That is an owl. So let's go on to the next slide, slide 31. What kind of owl? The great horned owl. So called because it looks like it has horns or ears, but they're neither. They're just feather top tufts. Its ears are little holes lower down on the side of its head. On that previous slide, I said there was a tip. And the tip for learning sounds is to learn a few at a time. And then um, after you learn a few, go to learn a few more, unless you're really talented. Some people are very talented. I'm not, I'm not, I have to learn slowly. But some people who have good ears, maybe they're very musical, they can learn a lot. And especially there is a group of birders who are blind. Bird, blind birders go out in different places and they only use sound to identify birds. Actually, ornithologists who are good at sound say that is the best way because you can't always see a bird. It may be hidden uh, in the vegetation um, and just impossible to see, or it may be of the types that you have to hear it to know exactly what it is. So if you are good at sounds, I encourage you to keep going forward on that. And if not, just learn a few at a time and practice them, it's fun. Now, uh, slide 32, uh, if you're not seeing three birds, you just advance one at a time to show the silhouettes, which is just the shape, but basically shows the outline of the bird. So the first one, the largest one, with its wings straight out, is a bald eagle. It has, um, its silhouette shows that its wings are very long and also very broad. The second one, a little smaller, we've seen this one before, this is a crow, okay? You can see that its tail is a little bit longer and its wings um, are a different shape. You can also see this, the feather tips separately. Now the third one, a little smaller, what's that one? That's a very common one too, plump. It's on the ground, it's standing, you can see that from its silhouette. Uh, that's the American robin. Okay, so we're going to go to slide 33, and there's three on this one too. Let's show them one at a time if possible. The first one, we've seen this one before. Look at those wings out behind its back, a hummingbird. Okay, very um, typical. It's very, no other bird flies like this because it can hover. And so that's hummingbird. The second one um, with a white background is... We've seen this one before too. Long legs. You can see from the silhouette, long neck, long bill. It's a wading bird. It's a great egret or perhaps a great blue heron. And then the third one, what's the third one? On the bottom, with the white background. Okay, it's a trick question, not a bird at all. If you see this, you're actually seeing a mammal, a bat. Okay, so let's go to the next slide for a quiz here. All right, this is can be a common twilight or sunset um, view because as night comes on, this type of bird comes out. Uh, you can see that it's got a pretty fat body or at least its feathers are all fluffed up and a big head and you see some tufts on its head. What is it? Let's go to slide 35. Oh, the great horned owl. Good one, excellent, so that's silhouette. So now we're gonna move on to the final, uh, not so secret secret tip, colors and markings. And uh, there should be three birds on this. If not, you can just advance to show all three birds. 
Um, so uh, colors and markings are a lot of fun. They're really fun. And if you want to just look at them and not even identify the bird, you can do that because if it's just so beautiful, but they can also help you identify the bird. So for instance, the um, highest bird, the bird on the left, uh, do we know what that is? Can you guess? If you don't know, just guess. Yes, it's a bluebird, beautiful blue back and red breast there on our Eastern bluebird. And then there's a Western bluebird as well. Uh, in the middle, you know what that is? It's a woodpecker. That is a ladderback woodpecker. Um, a lot of the woodpeckers have a, their back looks like that, um, a mottled black and white, and that kind of helps them blend in with the tree trunks. But they also have some lovely coloration on their heads, and this one does, and others do as well. And then on the bottom right, who knows what that is? This one's found, it's found all across the country. If you don't know what it is, guess. Yes, red-winged blackbird. Uh, sometimes I mess up and I call it a red-shouldered blackbird because it looks like it's shoulders to me, but it's not really. Um, it's a red-winged blackbird. Okay, so let's go to the next slide, slide 37. And there's two images. Let's start with just one, if we can. On the right, um, this is to show you that uh, some that co colors and markings can be confusing because what is that bird on the right? It's a little hard to tell. Let's show the second slide. So on the left, that's an American robin. Why do they look so different? Well, it gets complicated because the young birds often look very different from the adults. Birds have the ability to molt their feathers, that is lose some and grow new ones. And they do this to keep them in good shape for one, but also to have coloration that's going to help them in their life. So when they're babies, the coloration helps them be camouflaged. And when they get older, their coloration can help them be camouflaged in where they're gonna be as an adult. Oftentimes it also um, displays to a mate that they're very healthy, like those color patches that the woodpeckers have. So with some birds, you have to learn what they look like as young or juveniles and as adults and make it even more complicated. <laughs> Some birds, like the bald eagle, go through several different molts of colors, three or four, and gulls do this too, seagulls, uh, before they reach their adult plumage. But you shouldn't let that stop you because there are plenty of adult birds out there whose colors and markings will um, help you identify them. Now, if you're really, really gonna get into this, um, you see that there are many different markings on a bird on their head and on their wing. This is slide 38. Sorry, I forgot to say that first. So go to slide 38. Um, so many different markings. You should see a picture of that bird's head and the bird's wing here. And you can learn all these and this will help you to identify different birds. But if you're good at bird calls, well, I encourage you to go with those bird calls. Um, it's a lot of fun to look at all these birds' details and so forth, but remember, Colors and markings is number six, right? Okay, so we're gonna go on to slide 39. Going back over our big six not so secret secret tips. Do you remember what they are? What was one? Yeah, you should be able you may be able to go through these one at a time, um, forwarding to show one through six. Number one, location, where you are and where that bird is. Where the bird is, is called, uh, where, or where it could be found, is called its range. Remember my dad, who saw the, thought he saw a Jamaican woodpecker in Maryland? Uh-uh. Where was he? He was in Maryland. What was the bird's range? Jamaica. Number two is habitat. Where, you know, are you at a beach? Are you in a backyard? In a forest? In a desert? Some birds will only be in one type of habitat. Some birds may be two. Some birds you might find in many, many different habitats, like uh, gulls are one, starlings, um, uh, uh, English sparrows. Uh, so number three is behavior. To help you remember behavior, think about uh, how a bird feeds. That's very helpful. And also remember the flight pattern principles song uh, which you have the words of in this in this presentation. 
Um, next, number four, is the sound that that bird makes. Remember, you can't tell a fish crow and American crow apart unless you hear them. All right, we're going to practice again. Fish crow. Ah, 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 ah. And the American crow? Ah, ah. Okay, great. I'm glad you have that one down. And don't forget the owl. The fifth one is silhouette. So what the outline of the bird looks like. That helps you with um, seeing uh, proportion as well. Is its bill big or small? Is its tail long or short? Its wings, are they thick or thin? And so forth. Uh, silhouette, silhouette can be fun. Sometimes that's the only thing you can see, especially like if you're looking toward the sun. Silhouette can be fun. Sometimes that's the only thing you can see, especially like if you're looking toward the sun. Um, I had a teacher in high school whose eyesight was very, very bad. He would take us out birding and, um, uh, and instead of math, occasionally we'd go birding and he could identify by silhouette. So even if your eyesight's not great, you can use silhouette. And then six, the last one of the not so secret secret tips is colors and marking. Save that to last because that one um, is hardest to see and you might need binoculars or a spotting scope for it. So what is my final message to you? It is next slide, slide 40, go birding. Wherever you are, you can see birds pretty much everywhere. You, you might, you might uh, take this on as a challenge. Are you anywhere outside, that is, you know, where the birds can be, where you don't see birds? I, I think it's going to be pretty rare. If you don't see them, listen for them. So how, you can have a lot of fun with that. Now, I got um, one more slide, useful websites. So if you want to do more um, research, slide 41. And then let's go to slide 42. And uh, Elgin, if you can read to me questions that people have, I will try to answer them. And thank you very much for uh, watching this presentation, everyone. And I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, but that happens. But the most important thing is to remember to go look at birds and really have fun with it because it can be a lot of fun. Uh, and now I'll answer your questions. Elgin, can you um, let me know what they are? I can't hear you guys. I hope you can hear me. Uh-oh. It's because the story, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Dory? You can yes? Okay. All right, I'm going to read some questions. First question is from, uh, I believe, Demetria. How do owls use their hearing to locate food? Is it similar to bats in any way? Can you hear me?
Okay. Hey, Dory, can you hear me? All right, here's what I think we should do. We lost your sound. So can you, um, just you, log out and come back in? All the other present, all the other participants, just sit tight. And then that way you'll be able to have your screen. Okay, so totally log out of the whole program and then log back in. Okay, but everybody else sit tight with us. Thank you. And then she'll be able to see all of your questions and answer them for you. Yes, I, I know um, DVHS. She's awesome. One of our favorites. Hold on, Donna. We're going to be coming back. She's going to come load back in.